Uh, App Engine is another example of this, this infrastructure like, uh, like Amazon EC2, where developers, instead of having to, again, not to belabor the point of building your own infrastructure, but if you have a, if you have a very popular uh, software application and you suddenly get a whole uh, uprising of traffic, the typical response of most applications is to go down due to lack of, of resources. So if you're the developer of that application, what you need to do... Can I switch them? I switched? What? Oh, well, I guess this is gone. Uh, can you hear me in the back? Um, so where was I? Uh, we're talking about App, uh, app Engine. <coughs> so instead of, instead of having to actually make a scramble, purchase more machines, get these machines into a data center, possibly purchase more bandwidth, worry about all these infrastructure things, developers can write their software, push it into our infrastructure, and we will scale that and run more instances, handle more data, provide more bandwidth as necessary. And as Simon pointed out, multiple companies are, are doing this sort of thing. <coughs> uh, open source code is obviously a, a big part of the internet. Uh, open protocols such as TCP IP, which is what the internet's built on, uh, various, uh, various open source systems and software are sort of what got things kick-started. Uh, whether, so whether it's SendMail or other, other, other software such as that, we've open sourced uh, over 100 different projects so far in the last four years that have provided our developers and our consumers a better experience and better ability to, to innovate and use those. Uh, to touch briefly on one is Android, our open source mobile applicating, applicate, <coughs> operating system. Android, uh, is the goal of it, we have a number of different goals with it, but one is it allows our hard, hardware manufacturers to have a common platform, focus more on hardware and innovating in their hardware. It allows developers to focus on developing applications that can run on a common platform across multiple phones. And lastly, consumers get a better internet experience on mobile phones, which is very important to us. But while we, we do think open is important, open is, is integral to the internet, it's integral to the continued success of the web. But the, the, I want to take a different angle on that. I don't think that open is the end goal of all this. The end goal of this really is two things, and that's choice and trust. These are two big things that made us really successful, okay? We, we always say that our competitors are only a click away. If someone wants to try another search engine, they just type a different URL into their browser. It's just that, that simple. But <clears throat> let's, let's think of, again, go back to the 90s and talk about software and how you acquired new software, okay? Now, the first thing you would do is you'd go to the store. We purchased a box. Inside of that box was a diskette. And sometimes, if you were lucky, a manual. You'd come home, you'd put the diskette in your computer, install the software, reboot seven or eight times, and then you'd have this wonderful piece of software you can use. If you decide you didn't like it and you wanted to switch to another piece of software, you go back to the store, you get another box, another diskette, you install that in your machine, and you try that out. Okay? There's a really high barrier to entry to getting started, to just trying something out. Now, you don't have to do any of that. It's merely a matter of typing a few characters into your web browser to try another application through another, another website. So that's, that's your choice. The barrier to entry, the ability for you to try new things out is extremely low. So you can give something, a, get a taste of something. If you don't like it, you can move on very quickly. And that leads to trust is that we think it's, well, I personally think especially, that it's important that, that now more than ever, that consumers trust the companies that are providing their services to them and, and hosting their data. Because it's so easy to switch. It's so easy to change and move around. And again, I'm speaking specifically to consumers here, much less on the enterprise level. The, the, the other example I have on this is, if you run a flat, let's say you run a flat on this side of town, and it's a little expensive, but it's been good for you for a couple years. And you find a better deal across town with a view of the river. It's a lot larger. You decide you're going to move out. So you go tell your landlord, well, I'm going to move to this other flat, so I'd like to give my 30 days notice that I'm leaving. And they said, that's fine. You're welcome to move out. But you're going to need to leave all your wedding pictures, your children's uh, shoes, 
your journals, your diary, your furniture, and your clothing. But other than that, you know, have a safe trip. Ah, clear. Is this an attempt to sabotage me? <laughs> um, next, I'll speak with a glass of water balance in my head. Thank you. Okay. We're back. Is this better or is this better? This? Yes? Okay. Anyway. Uh, so this is, I, I, so if, if a user, if, 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 if you have this landlord and you try to move out of this apartment and you have to leave all of your possessions, many of which are very valuable to you, you're probably going to wind up staying for considerably longer. It may get to a point where the cost of living there goes so high or the, it's so inconvenient for you that you will eventually leave all your possessions behind you. But I guarantee you, you will never do business with this person again because you've been betrayed by them. You haven't had this trust with them. If consumers give trust to a company by putting their data in them and using their services, there needs to be a way to revoke that. Okay? There needs to be a way to say, I no longer trust you. I'm going to take my toys and go home. So this leads up to the, the, the team that I started a couple years ago, an internal team within the company called uh, the Data Liberation Front. Um, uh, we couldn't really agree on a name when we decided to start it as an internal team, and we, so we took a cue from Monty Python's Life of Brian and uh, named it up to the New Dean People's Front in this case. Uh, but we saw ourselves as sort of a subversive group of engineers, although our idea within the company was anything really but subversive. Uh, we, we, we actually decided, instead of trying to convince other product, all of our products to make it easier for people to take their data out of our, our products, that we would actually help them to do that. Because the, when we talk about